Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. This is part two of the Blackbeard Algae series. Um, in part one we talked about how we got Blackbeard Algae, we're talking about this tank here specifically, how we got it, um, some of the things you can do to control it from starting in the first place, and the first raft of attempts to deal with it. So we talked about adding some extra plants, to suck up some nutrients and some fish to start eating the algae. Go and check out part one if you haven't already seen it in one of these corners, but in this part two, we're going to be talking about, even though they're doing a great job, these fish and the plants, that's more of a, a longer term, slower process. The flying silver foxes are doing a great job, they're eating it, um, but there's a lot in there because I definitely left it to get really bad on purpose just so I could make a video about it. Definitely. So I need a bit more of an immediate effect and short of getting in there and ripping it out with your hands and anyone who's ever had blackbeard algae will know that that's not even an easy option. Um, there are some other things that we can do. So I'm going to look at hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide. Easy for me to say. Hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. You might have seen other videos on the subject and you'll see things ranging from it's horrifically dangerous to it's completely ineffectual. It's one of those things that is both completely safe and quite dangerous. That is one of the more stupid things that I've ever said. Everything is dangerous if you do it at a high enough level. Um, what we're talking about here is really uh, an effectiveness of dosing scale. And on that scale, if you imagine a scale that starts at one side and it has completely ineffectual, doesn't do anything, goes all the way through, brilliant, does loads of good work to, wow, I've killed everything in my tank, this is horrific. That is to say that if you don't use enough you don't see any benefit, you don't see it working, you go onto Facebook or YouTube and make posts and videos going, it's rubbish, there's no point to doing this, it doesn't, it's crap, or you use far too much and you wipe out your tank and everything dies and you go, oh God, I must tell everyone, go on Facebook, go on YouTube telling everyone how horrific it is and you should never do it. But that scale, you've got to focus in on the centre ground where it does do the good work. So ineffectual, brilliant, and horrifically dangerous, all these things are true. So the way H2O2 works, um, it oxidizes the problem if you like. It's hydrogen peroxide, two hydrogens, two oxygens. Uh, when left to break down in water, it turns into hydrogen and oxygen, completely harmless. What the harmful part of it is, is when you add it to your tank, it starts to immediately break down and release free radicals. Uh, oxygenized free radicals. Um, I won't pretend to know the science inside out, but you can go up and look at this. But essentially, free radicals are unstable atoms that look for something to batter. So they try and find something to attack, some cells to attack. And the easiest thing they find in a tank with blackbeard algae is the blackbeard algae. So they go and they attack that. Uh, and this process all happens within kind of an hour. You add H2O2 to a tank and within an hour it's broken down and it's gone and it's completely harmless and it's done its thing. It's when you have added too much to your tank during that hour it attacks your black beard algae but there's still loads left over it goes and finds something else to attack and that might be your plants or your fish or you know that kind of thing so that's when it becomes dangerous so again dosing being the ideal thing to think about here. So all we are trying to do really is to get the right dose to make sure it attacks the algae as effectively as possible without attacking anything else. So what dose should you use? It's really hard for me to tell you because you kind of need to work it out for yourself. Uh, and the ways you might work that out is to start really slow and ramp it up is probably the safest way. For me, something in the two to four millilitres per 10 litres is kind of the effective range for a tank like this, for a tank of mine. So this oxidising effect is going against organic matter. The organic matter we're targeting is the black beard algae, but there's lots of other organic matter in your tank potentially. So you need to kind of work out what dosage you need to make it effective. Uh, ramping up a dosage might be starting slow and ramping up is probably a, a good way to gauge it if you're not sure. For me, four to two to four millilitres per 10 litres is kind of the way that I want to go. Um, but again, the more matter you've got in there, you might want to change that. The type of hydrogen peroxide you get, whether it's 3%, 6%, might want to adjust your dosage. Uh, and think about things like, what else are you putting in there? If you're putting in some fertilizers with heavy iron content, the reaction with iron might throw up some unwanted results. So do your own research and caution is key, but with the right caution and starting slow and ramping up, you can figure this out for yourself. For me, I'm gonna go kind of two to four milliliters per 10 liters. And we're gonna try a couple of different approaches to how we do that, which is quite important because you can do spot treating, which is effectively taking a syringe of the hydrogen peroxide 
and syringing the areas that you're targeting. So if you've got a particularly bad outbreak on a piece of wood or a rock, um, you might want to just turn your filters off because it will act against your beneficial bacteria. Turn your filters off and just spot treat the areas. Leave it there for kind of half an hour, turn your filters back on it should turn pink and start to die off. If you can take things out, so if you can get like a piece of rock or a piece of wood that's badly infected, take it out, spray it, leave it for 10 minutes and then put it back in. Again, you'll see it start to die off and it all will be good. The thing about that direct spraying, when you can take things out there, it's much more effective. And you can literally hear it working. Now, I don't know if this will work, but you can hear it fizzing and doing all its good stuff. If this was underwater, so more like the injection method, you would see this releasing bubbles as it was doing it. You can actually see the bubbles even though it's outside of the water. Well, I can. If you want to doze the tank, that's when people start to get into trouble because the who mix their methods and it all gets a bit blurry, shall we say. So what I would suggest in that case is you dose your tank. So again, if you're going for, let's say, four millilitres per 10 litres, what I would do is I would actually drain my tank down. So I would take out a good chunk of water, um, exposing any plants I've got up here so as I can directly spray them. And what I'm looking for is working out the volume of water once it's been dropped how much am I spraying, because that's going to go into that volume of water and making sure I'm still not going over that dose of two to four mil per 10 litres. So if I spray to a certain point, I might then top up, but I wouldn't spray and then add another full dose. So you need to be very careful what you're doing. But I think that's the best of both worlds because the stuff you spray will directly attack the visible stuff that's above the water line. And then when you start to fill it back up with water again, that will then circulate around the tank um, and treat the whole tank for the bits that you can't necessarily spray very easily. So I did say turn your filters off when you do this. So what I would do is I would make sure I just leave my filters on, but take out the filter media. So I'll take the filter media out of the canister, put it in a bucket of water, leave it there for the hour that I'm messing around with the tank. Because I think flow when you're treating your tank is really important. You don't want to just throw it in there and have it all stagnant because that's when it will go into the fish gills because that's the it needs flow to find something to attack and the only flow when you've not got a filter running is water passing through a fish's gills. So you don't want that. So I would leave the filter running to get as much filtration as I can or as much water movement as I can if I'm dosing the tank. Leave that for again half an hour and then for the last half hour get the filter in back up and running when you're all topped up and good to go. And I call that my kind of hybrid method um, where it's a little bit of spot treatment in that I'm treating everything that's there and it's a little bit of tank treatment because that is falling into the water and I'm getting it moving around the areas I can't see. Um, you may hear of the one-two punch or the double punch effect where people will do tank dosing. So they'll dose the tank one day with um, H2O2 and then the next day they'll come along with something like uh, Seachem Excel or easy carbon or some kind of liquid carbon and we'll dose the tank the next time with the liquid carbon. I've done it in the past. I'm, I'm a blackbeard algae aficionado, if don't you know. It's never really worked for me. And again, it's probably me. I'm not saying that that's not the an effective method. It just hasn't worked for me. So whatever way I'm doing it, I'm not doing it effectively enough. So I'm not doing it again. I also don't have any liquid carbon. I don't like liquid carbon. I think it's rotten. So I've not got any to use. So that's another factor. So we're just sticking with the H2O2 as well as the stuff we did in part one. Well, we've drained down about half the tank. I'm just going to apply to the leaves above the water, the hydrogen uh, peroxide. I'm using a 3% solution. Um, if you're using a 6% solution, obviously check your own dosages. I'm just going to spray it liberally, knowing that I'm still going to stay within that safe dosage and literally just give it this kind of thing going on. You'll see the filter is running, but it is running empty. So I'm not endangering my beneficial bacteria. And that's going to get any of the H2O2 
that goes into the water column, it'll get it moving around. I've also got a pump down on this side that's circulating as well. So I should get a decent amount of circulation and get the stuff moving across the tank, throughout the tank. So it's also a good time to do some filter maintenance and I can clean that out properly. Got that refilling, the filter's running empty. I've now got, it'll take at least an hour to refill this. I've got time to clean out the filter media, get that all ready to go back in. And by the time I attach all that back again, treatment done. And you can kind of see it starting to take effect already. Um, if you zoom in there, there's lots of bubbles on the blackbeard algae, that's the oxidisation happening. Um, maybe not coming across great on the camera, but it is there, it is happening. That'll start to die off in the next day or so. A few hours later, you can see the tank, the lights are just starting to go down. It's filled back up again, filtration is running, everything's happy. And already we're seeing signs that it's starting to work. So we can see some of the blackbeard algae starting to turn red and that's the first thing that's going to die off. Sometimes it turns red, then white, and then just drops off. Or it seems to me fish start to like eating it at that point. So I'm more than expecting to come back in the next couple of days and be completely decimated. Um, fish all seem fine. I think it's important if you are going to do this, you keep an eye on things. You're looking for fish that are in distress, they're looking uncomfortable, they're um, scratching, they're bombing about the place. Just acting um, abnormally, um, that's when you might have to intervene. But it's all gone quite well, all the fish seem really happy. Um, my expectation is that in a couple of days the water will be crystal clear, so things are starting to drop off already. So re we're seeing... We're seeing really quick impacts on all this. It's starting to make a difference uh, quickly, which is what you want. So I'm trying to make a big dent in this so as I can let the fish and all the floating plants and stuff finish it off. Um, I'm not going to do the one-two punch of using some kind of easy carbo or liquid CO2 uh, after this. I might redo this treatment again next week if it needs it. We'll just play it by ear. So in part three, I'm hopefully going to be able to show you a nice pristine tank and talk about all the things that worked well and the things that didn't work as well. So if you're interested in following along, there's a button down there you can click and you can see what happens uh, in future videos. And leave a, a comment down below, let me know if there's something you would have done differently. I know this isn't a definitive list of every possible way for dealing with PBA. It's my opinion. I'm not an expert, I'm an enthusiastic amateur. These are things that I've done before, things that have worked that I keep doing more of, the things that didn't work, I drop them. That doesn't mean they won't work for you. So interested to hear what your thoughts and suggestions are for other things to do. But yeah, I'm just sharing the things that I've done and hopefully showing you them working. If you like this kind of thing, click that subscribe button. Like I say, come and join me on a Friday night, 9 p.m. UK time. We do a live stream where we can ask questions at all things fishy and other stuff too. See you then. Bye.